everybody, this is the video of the microwave simulation for physics and everyday life and conceptual physics. Ideally, you would play around with the simulator yourself and answer the questions, but if that's not a possibility for you or for some reason Java won't run on your machine, this is intended to be your backup for that. So in my simulator, I have a microwave box uh, and I have a single water molecule. I'm starting on the one molecule tab of the simulator. And as we can see, if we turn the microwave on, uh, the electromagnetic wave starts moving through that space and it's being represented both by vectors and we see the curve of that. But we notice that the water molecule rotates because again the water molecule is polar and so it rotates to line itself up in the changing electric field. So if that electric field is changing with time, I get rotation out of that. Uh, if I turn down the frequency so it's much lower, the rate at which my water molecule actually spins is also much lower. If I go much faster, oh heck, let's maximize it. I do get some fairly fast rotations, but the higher frequency is not always better. In fact, you can send microwaves at too high of a frequency to actually optimally rotate the water molecule, but I think we don't see that until we get onto the many molecules tab here. Uh, so we'll go back to the middle frequency that they started us at. And you can also in the simulator change the amplitude. So for her example, here is a higher amplitude wave, but you'll notice it's not really doing anything different to the water molecule because the water molecule is still uh, spinning around to align itself in the direction of whatever the electric field is at a given time. Uh, there's also a couple of different ways you can represent this, so I guess I happen to be used to the curve that has the vectors in there, um, but you could also see just the vectors of that changing electric field. Or, uh, for some people, this is useful. This is called a full field representation, and it's drawing a vector at a whole bunch of grid points that demonstrates what the field looks like at that point as the microwaves are uh, bouncing around here in the microwave. So single line of molecules is a little bit different when we turn the uh, microwave on with a single line. Notice that they start to rotate, but that rotation also causes them to crash into each other and cause translational motion. And this is the real secret here. If the rotation uh, causes them to bump into their neighbors and uh, causes translational motion and more kinetic energy, notice that temperature over on the side uh, is going up when I have this effect. And I think the many molecules is even better, not even a single line. There's lots of molecules in here, which is a more realistic simulation of what's happening when you're heating a piece of food. We'll go ahead and turn the microwave on and start these rotating. And again, immediately they start crashing into each other and turning a lot of that rotational kinetic energy into translational kinetic energy. And the temperature is just going way up. Again, here we could change the frequency, and I truthfully don't know if they made the simulation have the optimal frequency that food microwaves are manufactured at, but it appears to be uh, pretty much the case. If we go down to low frequency, I'm going to guess that over time we're going to see the temperature drop a bit here, because I'm causing less rotation from the microwave and therefore less translational motion. And then I have no idea why they made coffee in the simulator, but coffee is important to many of us these days. And so here are my water molecules bouncing around in my cup of coffee that is being microwaved. Okay, now I'm going to go through the questions that are asked on the worksheet. Uh, it says, using the simulation to guide your description and understanding, explain how microwaves are able to heat foods that contain liquid water molecules and how that heat or thermal energy is represented in the simulation. Well, again, we've kind of talked through that as we were uh, doing the simulation, but the microwaves heat foods by the microwaves themselves causing polar water molecules to rotate. But polar water molecules that rotate will bounce into other polar water molecules, and actually a good portion of that rotational energy will be turned into translational energy, and faster moving particles means higher amounts of kinetic energy. 
and higher temperature in the, uh, the substance that's being heated. So here, the simulation is representing that by the motion of the particles, but also by providing you a uh, simulated thermometer over on the side of the simulator. The second question was a multiple choice question. How do microwaves heat food? Microwaves cause water molecules in food to rotate. Microwaves also push the water molecules so they start moving horizontally. The faster they move, the higher the temperature was option A. Option B, microwaves cause water molecules in food to rotate. Water molecules in food are rotating and how fast they're rotating indicates the temperature. C, microwaves excite electrons in the atoms, making them hotter. Or D, microwaves cause water molecules in the food to rotate. When they hit each other, they convert rotation energy into speed and kinetic energy, and the faster they move, the higher the temperature. The best answer of those four is D. It is true that the rotation is happening, and that's in options A, B, and C. Uh, but the water molecules don't just move horizontally, as is suggested in option A. They move all over the place once they bounce into each other, and the faster they're moving, the higher the temperature. A microwave operates at 2.45 gigahertz or 2 billion 450,000 or two rather 2 billion 450 million cycles per second and then it says as a result water molecules rotate how much. Well, truthfully, this depends on what your definition of rotation means. If you mean rotation is from being uh, let's say the hydrogen atoms are in the upward orientation to the next time they're in the upward orientation then the number of rotations should match the frequency. And if we turn it down to lower frequency, it'll be easier for us to see this. So right now, hydrogens are pointing down. Now hydrogens are pointing up. Now they're pointing down again. And in the amount of time they went through that pattern, one wave cycle passed. And so the answer would then be 2,450,000,000 times per second. Some people read rotation, though, and think about any turning of the water molecule. And in truth, the water molecule turns twice each time a wave passes. So you can make a pretty good argument that water molecules rotate 4.9 billion times, uh, if that makes more sense to you. We have five true and false statements. Uh, if we increase the frequency of the microwave, let's say from 2.45 gigahertz to 4.6 gigahertz, we don't know what random units these are in here, but just if we increase the frequency, uh, does the space between the peaks and the valleys in the standing wave pattern get closer? I think we will see, well, no, we can see this here, but let's turn the frequency up. In fact, I'm gonna go a little bit more. So we're looking at the distance between peaks and valleys in that pattern that occurs. And if we increase the frequency, the spacing between those peaks or those valleys gets smaller. So that first statement would be true. Second question, uh, if you increase the frequency, the molecules rotate back and forth more slowly. Well, here's low frequency and they're rotating back and forth pretty slowly. High frequency, they rotate back and forth much more quickly. Six is something we haven't really talked about quite yet. It says the leakage through the screen door would increase. Well, uh, the leakage of the screen door is directly tied to the wavelength of the waves that you are producing. And so if you increase the frequency of the microwave, you are going to simultaneously decrease the wavelength of those microwaves that are produced. And the smaller the wavelength, the better the chances are that they could pass through that mesh screen that is within the door of your microwave. So technically that is true, though I do not think you would get noticeable leakage just by doubling the frequency. I would expect you would have to increase it a much greater amount. Uh, seven, true or false, the microwaves would travel faster in the oven. Well, microwaves, like all forms of electromagnetic radiation, are electromagnetic waves, and all of them travel at the speed of light. So increasing the frequency, while well, that will change the wavelength, is not going to change the speed. The last true and false question is that food wouldn't cook. And so 
if I go to the many molecules, which is a better simulation here, here's low frequency. And then if I increase this, is it true that food wouldn't cook? The answer is no, that's not true. It would still definitely cook. But it is also true that if you increase the frequency too much, you're sending changing electric fields through the chamber of the microwave faster than the water molecules can actually turn and respond. And so it's possible to drive the system at too high of a frequency so that the water molecules are not at the optimal frequency for turning back and forth. And even though your food would still cook, it would do so much less effectively. And so in fact, the frequency that microwave ovens are manufactured at is meant to be ideal for causing the maximum amount of rotations uh, within the water molecules in the food. Last question, why does liquid water heat better than frozen ice in a microwave? Well, we have choices of ice molecules are held in place so they can't rotate as they would in a liquid. It's not the case, both heat the same, but since ice is colder, it appears to heat more slowly. Ice molecules are not polarized and do not rotate. Ice is harder, so microwaves can't penetrate the ice. Or ice is shiny, so the microwaves are reflected off of it, making it harder for microwaves to rotate the ice molecules. Of those, the best answer is A. In uh, ice, the water molecules, they're still polar, but they are now held in a crystal lattice and bonded to their nearest neighbors, and it is not nearly as easy for them to rotate. So you may have noticed or learned from experience it's actually fairly difficult to heat foods in a microwave. What they generally do when you're heating a frozen food in a microwave is heat it, uh, if you're heating it on the microwaving setting, for a bit and try to develop some warm spots and then give time for that heat to spread through convection and conduction. Uh, and the more of the food becomes in the non-frozen state, uh, the faster it will heat up when it is microwaved.